This is why the opening ritual for the club is the cremation of care. During the ritual, the effigy of a baby is rowed across the water by the grim reaper and given to a high priest who then tosses it on a fiery sacrificial altar of a 40-foot owl god. It is an earth-based ritual in which care is burned away. The conscience is symbolically cast aside so that they may ignore the pain they have inflicted on others for the advancement of their own agendas. With this ceremony called the cremation of care that uh, begins the, uh, the uh, two-week encampment where the body of dull care symbolizing woes and concerns is burned on an altar in front of a big owl statue. When that ceremony ends, they all start to cheer and yell. You have to ask yourself why. Why it is that somebody would want to do that, let alone these elite people. And if you look at the elite throughout history, many of the people that achieve pinnacles of power are into the occult. They seek a supernatural way to gain power. Why are Christian conservatives such as the Bushes and Newt Gingrich attending the Grove? And I, I recognize I'm not going to be invited to Renaissance Weekend or that Bohemian deal where Newt, Rush, and Dick all sit in a teepee, naked, beating on tom-toms. Why does the media barely mention the Grove? Because many of them are in attendance. Late political cartoonist Phil Frank of the San Francisco Chronicle draws a reporter thinking about his loyalties to Bohemian Grove as he takes notes for a story. Stories about what happens in these redwoods are hard to come by. A campground statue reminds Bohemians to keep their mouths shut about the Grove. Many world events have been shaped at the Grove, including the creation of the atomic bomb. Discussions at the Grove in the 1930s helped lead to the development of nuclear power and the atomic bomb. Every Republican president since Calvin Coolidge has been a member, as well as many Democrats, including Jimmy Carter. If you look at the membership lists of the Bohemian Grove and the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, a lot of the key level people are overlapping and are, are involved in, in numerous groups. In addition to pagan rituals that take place there, this all-male club also deals with darker themes. Through the plays Montezuma, which feature Aztec human sacrifice, and Faust, which feature Mephisto. Some of these plays are disturbingly flamboyant. Many of the elitists have a penchant for cross-dressing and singing show tunes. Perhaps that is why much of the all-male staff also happen to be homosexuals. Well, each year, uh, many of them seem to have a stunt, uh, or try to come up with a stunt. Last year, in 1980, uh, the popular button was uh, Free the Fortune 500. Bohemian Grove that I attend, one time at a time, it is the most famous goddamn thing you will ever imagine. In 2004, the New York Post reported that gay porn star Chad Savage would be servicing moguls at the Bohemian Grove. In recent years, several politicians have been outed in scandals, including Senator Larry Craig, who tried to solicit sex from an undercover officer in 2007. Even more shocking, it was revealed in 2004 that right-wing blogger James Guckert, who had unprecedented access to the White House during the Iraq War, was actually Jeff Gannon, a madam and male prostitute for MilitaryStuds.com. During his two years writing for GOP USA and Talon News, Gannon officially made over 200 appearances at the White House. Oddly enough, over two dozen of these visits would take place when there were no scheduled briefings. He failed to check in or out with the Secret Service on many other occasions, coming and going as he pleased. These type of activities are not new to the White House. In 1989, headlines involving call boys in the White House rocked the cover of the Washington Times. The Washington Times reported today that unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a call boy ring. The paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late-night tour of the White House last year. Hundreds of credit card receipts obtained by the Washington Times confirmed that its clients were key officials of the Reagan and Bush administrations, military officers, congressional aides, and U.S. and foreign businessmen with close social ties to Washington's political elite. This ring extended beyond the White House and into Congressman Barney Frank's bedroom. Barney Frank, one of two openly homosexual members of Congress, acknowledged having used a male prostitute, whom he then hired as a personal employee. The man had keys to Frank's basement apartment on Capitol Hill. Frank paid him approximately $20,000 out of his own pocket to be his housekeeper and driver. But as first reported in today's Washington Times, the man was on probation for sex crimes and a drug conviction. 
and he ran a prostitution business out of Frank's home. Although Frank tried to claim ignorance, Stephen Gobi, the prostitute in question, claimed that Frank was completely aware of what was going on and was even receiving free and discounted sexual services. The fix seemed to be in. Frank was threatening members of Congress to remain silent prior to being exposed in this sex ring. Massachusetts Democrat Barney Frank, a homosexual, threatened to expose fellow congressmen he knew to be gay unless they stopped spreading rumors. Questions stopped and Frank walked away with a slap on the wrist. Some members of the Ethics Committee were disgusted. Do we tolerate, do we condone a member of this body who knowingly permits a house of prostitution to be operated out of his residence. You have just heard one of the most edited, selective garbage that has ever been put forth, in my opinion, in this house. Again, we see people of the highest levels of power involved in the most repulsive and decadent of crimes. They couldn't care less about the code of conduct that's taught in all major religions about treating others the way that you want to be treated. And then they masquerade, they put this false front on that they're like everybody else because your average person wants to do right, believes in some sort of a karma, believes in some sort of a divine uh, justice in the universe. And so these people need to put on this front that they're like the average Joe in middle America, that they go to church every once in a while, and that they believe in an afterlife and a divine justice. And so they have to put on this front that they're like everybody else in order to get elected and to be accepted and to not have people look at them suspiciously because if somebody goes around and openly admits that they were an atheist or that they were of some obscure religion, uh, people aren't going to throw their support behind them as much and they're not going to trust them as easily. The reality of this behavior is never revealed to the public as the media keeps any revelations quiet. Unfortunately, these type of activities continue to this day. Florida Congressman Mark Foley chaired the House Caucus on Missing and Exploited Children and went on television praising Chris Hansen's To Catch a Predator series. The Dateline piece has probably done more than any law we can create. Foley was later caught attempting to have sexual relations with numerous underage pages. Congressman Mark Foley, the man who championed the Child Protection Act of 2006, resigned after inappropriate emails and instant messages surfaced that he sent to former congressional pages. Once more, no charges were even filed. Foley himself has checked into rehab. No one has been charged with any crime.